Hello, this is Rich Bankhead, and this is the first lecture in a series of lectures covering electrical circuits. Electrical engineering is a profession concerned with systems that produce, transmit, and measure electrical systems. These systems can be broken down into five classes, communication systems, control systems, power systems, signal processing, and really computer systems. And I'd like to take a look at some basic examples of each of these systems. The first system is the ENIAC computer. It was developed in 1945, originally during World War II, but the war ended before the machine was operational. It was designed with the idea that it could aid in ballistics cal calculations. And listed on the screen, there's some facts about the ENIAC. Another fact that's important is that most of the original operators of the ENIAC and early computer systems as well were all women as they transitioned from their role to computer operators from their role of human calculators or human computers. The next device is a favorite of mine as it was invented by Doug Engelbart in 1963 and 64 as part of an experiment to find better ways to point and click on a display screen. And this is the original mouse, and it should be noted that it, it was nicknamed the mouse because it had a tail that came out of the end. And so originally, the mouse was tethered as a peripheral to the computer. With wireless technology, most computer mouse, mice, mouses, are uh, wireless and don't really have their tails, so their tails have been chopped off. Uh, the next the next example is Pong. It was developed by Alan Alcorn, who worked for Atari. And he developed it working for Atari as a side project and was originally released in 1972 and is known as the first commercial video game or successful video game. Later, Atari marketed it in partnership with Sears to a home console, which you could plug into your television and play Pong on your TV. Uh, the next Examples, the audio amplifier, it was invented by Lee DeForest. It was made possible by his invention of the vacuum tube in 1912. Originally, audio amplifiers were used in AM radios. Later in the 1960s, they faced out of vacuum tubes and audio amplifiers were based upon transistors. Next, electrical power systems are dedicated to the generation, transmission, distribution, and the utilization of electric power. Electric power. So how does power get from uh, Snoqualmie Falls, where it is generated in the generating station, to your wall outlet that's used to charge your cell phone? And so there's a whole study of engineering, or electrical engineering, that has to do with power systems. Next is the twin Mars rovers, Spirit and Opportunity. They landed on Mars in January of 2014. Both rovers significantly outlasted their 90-day life expectancy. Uh, opportunity to work for nearly 15 years and broke uh, the driving record on Mars, continually sending data back. And finally, uh, the iPhone introduced in 2007 was the first phone with a touch sensitive display. This feature is on most devices of its size now, including the Surface tablet that I'm working on currently. This idea that, that a phone or a device would be interacted, interacted with via touch display, really pioneered by the folks at Apple. And um, as Steve Jobs said, Apple really did reinvent the phone. And so, what do all these examples have in common as we look through them? And the basic sort of engineering idea behind all these systems is the electrical circuit. Every device can be modeled as an electrical circuit and uh, actually many electrical circuits. And so an electric circuit is a mathematical model that approximates the behavior of the ele actual electrical system. And really the course that's coming up is really a study of these electric circuits. And so to, to start us off with our first circuit, this is a flashlight design circuit. Um, instead of a light bulb, it, it's been modernized a little bit and we have a light emitting diode and in the circuit. We have a battery, a power source here. We have a resistor to control current flow and then we have a switch in the circuit. So when the switch is pushed, 
it connects these two dots across here and electrical current is allowed to flow through the diode. When current flows through the diode, the diode gives off light and provides light so that we can see. And so when the switch is released, uh, the circuit is opened, the, the current no longer flows through the loop, and then the light turns off. And so we're going to study uh, this quarter similar type circuits. Finally, um, a little bit of a cartoon circuit. Uh, this one is a favorite. It makes its rounds on the internet, and here's the original link to it. I'd, I'd encourage you to take some time to study it. Everybody seems to have a favorite part. I think my favorite part is the yarn right here, but as you look, um, there's some really funny things. Uh, or maybe the mouse, right? Or is that a mouse or a chipmunk or a squirrel? I think there's a squirrel in our circuit. Oh, there's a bat sign. And we could almost play Where's Waldo with the uh, cartoon fictional circuit. So uh, also, uh, I always see different things when I look, but uh, the bobber, right, for fishing? I think that's a fishing bobber. Anyway, so... Um, Lots of good stuff here. Uh, we won't study this one too much, but uh, hopefully give you some time to interact and smile. Finally, we have some assumptions that we make for electric circuits, and there are three of them. And they'll sort of be in the background as we work our way through. And so the first electrical assumption is that electrical effects happen in instantaneously throughout a system. And so uh, electrons, we assume, travel at the speed of light so that uh, in our circuit that um, when I flip a switch, the light turns on automatically. Uh, secondly, the net charge on every component in the system is always zero. We'll have components like capacitors, which store charge uh, in, in the separation of charge, where one side of the capacitor will be positively charged and the other side will be negatively charged. However, the net charge on the component overall will sum to zero. And finally, there'll be no magnetic coupling between components and systems. And as you go on in your engineering education, you'll see examples of magnetic coupling. For example, if two wires are too close to each other in a circuit board, they can interfere with each other through magnetic coupling. But in the case for the circuits that we work on in this course, there'll be nomadic, nomadic, no, for the circuits that we work on in this course, there will be no magnetic coupling. So this wraps up our first lecture. Tune in for the second lecture as we sort of get kicked off and move our way into the course.